Hello, welcome back to Coach Greg Sports. Uh, today we'll be talking about, we'll be talking a little bit more about draft strategies today. Today I'm going to do a little bit something different. I'm going to look at two of my teams from last year um, since the leagues were reactivated now. And then kind of look, look at how I drafted last year in these two leagues. Go over the formats of them and then kind of how that turned out um, looking back a year or almost a year later. So the first league um, is called Tim Tebow's Bible Camp League. This is a league that's been around since my college days, so we've been doing this a while. Uh, 12-team league. Our format setup's kind of like this. So we got a running back. It's a super flex league. Two or a quarterback super flex league. So we're pretty much two quarterbacks. Uh, you start two running backs, two wide receivers. You start a running back or wide receiver in this league and a flex spot, along with all the additionals. And then we also have let's see seven bench spots, two IR spots. I'm going to go over my draft from last year real quick. I actually end up with the first overall pick. We do um, randomized draft order every year. So I got Christian McCaffrey. I took him number one. This is a PPR, full point PPR league. So that's part that went part of my decision last year with McCaffrey. Um, obviously, you had kind of McCaffrey, Elliott, Barkley kind of all vying for it. This is also when uh, Elliott was having his holdout. So it's kind of between uh, McCaffrey, Kamara, Barkley. I took McCaffrey because he had the highest upside in PBR format. Um, then second round, we had Adam Thielen. who's was coming off a great year. End of the second round, it made sense to take him. I took Aaron Jones in the third round. He was a pure upside pick at that point. Then went with Tyler Lock. Obviously, it was like a wide receiver, too. He had upside and kind of a safe play, too. Uh, more upside at this point. Like I said, it was a super uh, flex league. So I took my first quarterback in the fifth round. This is pretty much... As early as I take it, this league uh, quarterbacks don't go didn't go off too crazy early on. So we got Deshaun Watson here in the fifth, has a good value. Um, D.D. Westbrook was somebody that I was high on last year. I think I talked about that in a different episode. Yeah, pairing him with Nick Foles would have been good, but uh, Foles ended up not playing very much last year, so he ended up just being a guy that kind of got cut in a lot of my leagues. Then we had Miles Sanders in the seventh year. This was a great value pick. Also, like towards the end of last year, obviously he helped out a lot. Then we had Austin Eckler in the eighth round, which is like crazy value because this is kind of at the point where we didn't know if Melvin Gorman was going to play or not. And Eckler obviously ended up being, you know, a top 10 running back last year, top 15 running back. Uh, Vance McDonald was in the ninth round. Last year he had a lot of hype going into last year. He was somebody I thought that could break out. So I just kind of took a shot on him there. For me, like tight ends, I don't like drafting tight ends like in the early rounds because either you get somebody early round and you have an opportunity cost where you lose a better player or you kind of like the middle round tight ends they usually don't pan out so i try to avoid them so kind of like round nine round nine and on is kind of like where i usually target my tight ends in most drafts then we had lamar jackson obviously broke out last year got him in the 10th round like i was i think i said in one of my other videos or one of the comments uh where i was talking about how i got lamar jackson in pretty much every one of my leagues last year and around this range because going into last year, he wasn't getting a lot of hype, but obviously his rushing upside was too much. Like, it was huge. And part of my strategy with this league, too, is I got mobile quarterbacks. So I got Deshaun Watson, I got Lamar Jackson, and then later down in the 14th round, I got Josh Allen, too. So between the three of them, I had three of the best uh, quarterbacks in terms of rushing upside last year. So since you were starting two on a weekly basis, I was pretty much covered all year. Didn't really need to pick up anybody else throughout the year. Let's see. Then I had Justin Jackson because... Um, Last year, obviously, Eckler and Jackson kind of split the workload going into the season, Gordon out, so they were kind of handcuffing each other, bought into both parts of the committee there. Uh, I took Tony Pollard. Like I said, Zeke was uh, holding out still kind of at this point, so in the 12th round, like, getting Tony Pollard was crazy. Like, would be a crazy value, obviously, if Zeke would have held out. Then we had Frank Gore. Just took a wild card on him. Uh, the Buffalo backfield wasn't anything crazy at the time. Then, obviously, we already talked about Josh Allen. I took Jordan Scarlett because going into last year, he was kind of projected to be the handcuff for McCaffrey just in case. McCaffrey's like, it's not comparable, but it was just kind of hand, doing a late handcuff just in case uh, something would happen to McCaffrey. I went with Ravens defense, who was actually pretty good last year. I think they had a favorable first week matchup as well last year. That's kind of how I went after them. Took the Giants kicker last year. He was a Pro Bowler the year before. This league also penalized is you, um, if your kicker misses field goals, then he was pretty accurate the year before, so that's kind of why 
part of my reason why I went after him. Then last round pick was Kenny Stills. Obviously, the Texans traded for him late or like in the off season prior to last year. So it just kind of took a wild card on him. Obviously, Will Fuller gets hurt a lot, so he didn't really do too much for me. Obviously, if you look back at my team now, tight end didn't work out too much. Thielen was hurt most of the year. Tyler Lockett was pretty much my only real wide receiver that I drafted, but like the running backs were pretty. So McCaffrey, Jones, Miles Sanders, Eckler, like that group of running backs held their own for me most of the year. I also did a whole bunch of waivers throughout the year. Like could probably go over a whole another episode just regarding that. So obviously this is an example of a super flex league. So in the super flex league, you're going to want to draft three quarterbacks just because like in a 12 team league like this, if you don't draft three quarterbacks, pretty much every other team is going to draft three quarterbacks and there's going to be nobody on waivers. So if when your guy has a bye or if somebody gets hurt, like you don't have anybody to fill in at all. So that was the first league that I was doing in last year. Then I'll go back over to this league. This league was pretty standard league. Uh, so we got quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a flex spot, uh, tight end, defense kicker. And then this one's got seven bench spots as well. So just going back here. Uh, this is my team over here. This was also a randomized draft, I'd, and this was my first year in this league. I took over for for another owner that wasn't very active the year prior. So I took uh, Zeke number two. I think Barkley went number one in this league. But um, this was a standard uh, standard scoring league. Zeke and uh, McCaffrey were both out there. I took Zeke just because it was standard league. So uh, McCaffrey's scoring, like his catches didn't matter as much in this league. Uh, I took Juju. Obviously, Juju was getting a lot of hype last year. Didn't quite pan out. Then I took Joe Mixon in the third round. Most leagues he was going in the second round last year. This is also a 10-team league compared to the 12-team league like that I was talking about earlier. Then we had Chris Carson here pretty much at the end of the fourth round, which was great value. Like Actually, when he fell to me, I was pretty happy about it at this point. He turned out good throughout the year. Then we had Tyler Lockett. So in this league, I pretty much went, you know, I got three running backs, two wide receivers here, so this is pretty much like at this point, I thought my lineup was pretty set. Then we were down to the sixth round. Chris Godwin was still hanging out there. Uh, I took him. Obviously, that worked out well last year. Then we had Miles Sanders. Uh, like I said, I got him pretty much in every league last year, kind of around this range. Then we had D.D. Westbrook. Obviously, I explained what already happened with him. I went. Then I got Marvin Jones. He's obviously got big play upside week to week. If I remember correctly, I didn't end up starting him very often. I did end up starting him the one week he had four touchdowns. Uh, then we had LaShawn McCoy. Obviously, the Kansas City backfield was kind of split up last year. McCoy had a history with Andy Reid, so I just took a wild card on that. Obviously, I already had like three or four running backs ahead of him, so it wasn't the end of the world if he doesn't pan out. Then we got Lamar Jackson. Like I said, every league I was in, I got him in like round 9, 10, 11, somewhere in there. Uh, obviously, I started him the whole year. Didn't have to worry about anything. Then we went Eric Ebron. He was somebody last year that was going – going pretty late in drafts um, considering how many tight end, touchdowns how many touchdowns he had the year before so it was just kind of a flyer pick didn't end up doing much last year got hurt towards the end of the year pretty much filled in with tight ends the rest of the year so like part of my strategy like obviously you've seen I took Vance McDonald and Eric Ebron in these two leagues didn't invest too much in tight ends so it's easier to cut bait with them like if they don't do anything if, if they don't perform it's not the end of the world. You just drop them and pick somebody else up. There's a lot of teams last year, they drafted O.J. Howard, you know, in the sixth round. And there's weeks where he'd goose egg people or he'd have, like, one or two points. But they'd held on to him because they drafted him in the sixth round. They're like, I can't drop this guy. He, he's so talented, he's going to break out at some point. Well, like, there's always a tight end kind of in those middle rounds every year that it happens to. So, like, I don't want, like, if I just draft somebody late and I'm not too attached to him, you can play a streaming game week to week. If somebody breaks out, you can hold on to them. It's not the end of the world either. Um, then we had, then I took the Ravens defense. Obviously, it's the same situation as before. Tony Pollard, so he went in the 14th round in this league. Uh, this was after Zeke signed, obviously, and I already drafted Zeke number two, so I kind of just handcuffed him there. And then, obviously, Frank Gore, same thing as the last one. And then I took Jake Elliott, a kicker out of Philadelphia. Nothing too crazy, but this was just a little bit of example uh, how I draft differently like league to league uh, obviously with the uh, super flex league i've drafted three quarterbacks in this league where we just start one quarterback only drafted one quarterback and i usually try to draft quarterback later obviously if you're in a super flex league 
you're going to draft your first quarterback a little bit earlier then. Overall, that's kind of just my approach. Usually I try to get running backs I'm pretty confident in early on or running back with upside like Aaron Jones or Chris Carson last year, Joe Mixon, kind of them. Kind of them guys like that I think are a little bit underrated. We can talk about some of those guys um, this year that I like as well. Uh, usually I don't invest too much into rookie running backs. Uh, obviously I grabbed Miles Sanders across my leagues last year. Uh, I just thought he had a decent opportunity, decent talent. Obviously it showed it towards the end of last year, but rookie running backs usually they can be hit or miss. I've hit some good ones in the past. Uh, Doug Martin, the first year he broke out, you can't always count on them. So, like, if you're drafting this year, you want to load up on running backs earlier so you don't have to take that risk on the rookie running back, you know, your DeAndre Swift or your Cam Akers or Keyshawn Vaughn or somebody like that. Because what happens uh, when Cam Akers struggles and Daryl Henderson comes in and he does well? Like, it's not out of the question that that happens. Or Kerryon Johnson stays healthy for once. And him and Swift just both split the workload, and both of them are irrelevant in fantasy almost. Or uh, who's the last one? Keyshawn Vaughn? Like, Ronald Jones could easily just hold on to that job all year. For me, it's just no trying to find the sure thing, especially at running back. Uh, wide receivers, even like last year, looking back, you can see some of these guys go later, like even these guys in the middle of the late round. So, like, these middle-round guys here, like Lockett and Godwin, those were two great wide receivers last year. And, like, especially if you're in a league that only starts two wide receivers that you have to start. Say you had a healthy Juju and he was playing as good as he could be and you had Lockett and Godwin, you'd be set just right there with those three guys. So, nothing too crazy. It's just the most important part is just knowing your league. When you go into a draft, you, you want to have a plan, but you need to be able to adapt your plan based on what's going on as well. Uh, with that being said, that's pretty much all I got for this video. I just want to show a couple examples of my teams from last year, how I kind of drafted, a little bit different st strategy and theory going into it. But like I said, we'll probably do a mock draft in the next video where we take like a quarterback early or a tight end early or something like that. Obviously, um, for me, I, pretty much there's no reason you should take anyone besides a running back and a wide receiver in the first round. Uh, obviously, if you look back in the past, people took Robert Gronkowski in the first round. There's been years where people took quarterbacks in the first round. It's never been worth it. Like Even when Gronk was at his peak, because he's only so much better than the next tight end. And the difference between him and the next tight end like in points per game is minimal compared to like the, your top tier running back. So whoever you're giving up, so if you're drafting Rob Gronkowski in the first round, you, that running back you could have took there instead, he's going to have more of a value on your team than that running back. So if you draft Gronkowski in the first round, the next tight end don't get drafted until round four. The difference between those two and the difference between the running back you take in round one and the running back you take in round four, there's a giant difference there between those two players. So that's just a little bit about that. Uh, quarterbacks, they're all pretty much points per game. There's very little difference in between them. With, the, with that being said, most years there's very little difference in between them. I think everybody kind of overreacts now just because we, obviously we had Lamar Jackson have uh, his great year last year where he scored a whole bunch of points and then Patrick Mahomes the year before that. But historically, between your quarterbacks, there ain't too big a difference between all of them. But that's pretty much all I got for this video. If you guys enjoyed this, if you'd like to hear more about my team's in the future, just let me know. Obviously, we'll be going over my teams as I draft them uh, coming up like this fall, going into the football season, and then just go through some of my thought processes. Obviously, we'll keep having some more mock drafts here and there, talking about different strategies as well, and getting prepared for this football season. Then after that, obviously, I said I have my other fantasy baseball draft on Thursday. I'll be doing our uh, reaction video to that on Friday. And then... Over the weekend, I probably won't have much going up. Um, we'll be gone for a couple days. And then after that, I'll be doing some sleeper candidates, some guys that some guys that I would not draft, especially considering where their ADPs are going. Just little stuff like that. If you guys liked and enjoyed this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It would be greatly appreciated. It helps me out, helps the channel out, helps our community grow. If you already subscribed or you're a new subscriber and you haven't clicked the notification button, there'll be like a little bell down below. 
uh, just hit that it'll let you know every time I upload a video with that being said if you got any other questions comments concerns or ideas leave them down in the comments below or you can uh, email me at uh, coachcraigsports at gmail.com or you can go to the Facebook page Coach Craig Sports on Facebook let us know there if there's anything else you guys need just let me know and with that being with that being said Hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day.